and welcome to the Spinnaker Industries training program on Workplace Hazardous Material Information System, WIMIS, Global Harmonization System 2015. At Spinnaker, your safety is our top priority. This is our agenda for today. First, we'll introduce you to WIMIS. Next, we'll move into the legislative requirements pertaining to WIMIS. From there, we'll move into the hazards of the product, health effects, WIMIS classification, labels, SDS, safety data sheets, hazard controls, and there will be a test at the end of the program. Please hold all questions till the end of the video. Introduction to WIMIS. WIMIS is a Canada-wide legislation system that gives workers the right to know about the hazards of a product used in the workplace, such as the safe use, safe handling, proper storage, and proper disposal procedures. WIMIS was first introduced in 1988 through a series of complementary federal, provincial, and territorial legislation and regulations. In 2015, the federal government updated WIMIS to include a worldwide hazard communication system known as GHS or Global Harmonization System. This was designed to make Canada's framework similar to that of other countries. So as you can see here, these are some of your old WIMIS symbols that you might have been familiar with. Today, we're moving over to these new symbols that have a diamond shaped bo red box. The main components of WIMIS include the classification system, which are symbols, labels, whether it's the supplier label or your own personal label and safety data sheets. Of course, everything is centered around education, which makes this program successful. Legislation. Whether it's the provincial regulations or federal regulations, WIMIS applies to everyone equally. First off, under the provincial regulations, regulations 860 WIMIS, it's broken up into three sections. Section one deals with labels and that's everything from section eight to 13 followed by SDS sheets, which is covered under sections 17 to 18, and lastly, workers' education, section 6 to 7. When you refer to the Canadian Labour Code, part 2, under part 10, WIMIS is broken down to the same three sections. Firstly, it's the labels, covered under section 10.35, SDS, under sections 10.34, and workers' education, under 10.14. Whether you're working in the province of Ontario or across Canada, WIMIS applies to everything. Roles and responsibilities. In order to have a successful system, everyone must have a role to do. Beginning with your supplier. Their job is to classify hazardous products, label hazardous products, and provide SDS information for hazardous products. Your employer has an important job to do. They are to identify hazardous products at work, obtain an SDS from the supplier, and ensure products are properly labeled on site, make SDS available to workers, and educate workers and provide women's training. Workers have an equal responsibility. They must read and follow the label and SDS sheet. When decanting a product, you must create a workplace label. You must follow SDS procedures and use the required PPE, participate in women's training, and report hazards or spills to your employer or supervisor. Hazards of a product. Physical states of hazardous products. Many products can change their state of matter through a variety of activities, whether it's physical activities, such as cutting brick or smoking, Temperature changes, moving from solid, liquid, or gas. And lastly, the chemical process, introducing two chemicals together to create something new. Health effects. Chemicals can affect us in many ways, whether it's acute, where the health effect can occur immediately or soon after the exposure, or chronic, where the health effect occurs over many months or years after the exposure. That's why it's important to always refer to your SDS sheets before handling a chemical. The route of entries. Chemicals can enter our bodies in many ways, whether it's through inhalation, ingestion, skin contact, or injections. Let's look at these a little bit more closely. Entry into the respiratory system. Example of diseases include lung cancer from asbestos, silicosis from silica dust, and asphyxiation from carbon monoxide poisoning. Entries into our skin. Examples of diseases include irritants and allergic contacts. Entries from injections. This can include rashes, bruises, allergic contacts, or blood pathogens. Hazardous products can also affect our digestive system, liver, kidneys, nervous system, and reproductive system. So that's why it's always important that we understand the chemicals that we're using before we actually use them so we can better protect ourselves from these hazards. Women's classification. Hazardous products are classified into the following structures. First, we begin with the hazard group moving into a hazard class, and then this is further broken down to a category or user type, or if we're in a category, a further broken down to a subcategory. So let's examine this a little bit closely. Hazardous products are classified into two 
hazard groups. Health hazards were classes of hazards that can impair human health, or physical hazards were classes of hazards that are based on physical or chemical properties. Next, we move into the hazard classes. If you're referring to a health hazard, examples include acute toxicity, skin corrosion, and carcinogens. Physical hazards include flammable gases and organic peroxides. Most hazard classes are assigned a hazard category. The hazard category is a number that represents how severe the product is, and it's a number one through four or even more. So for example, health hazard acute toxicity that can be consumed orally would have a health hazard health category as number one. A category one product is more hazardous than the category two product. A hazard category may be assigned a hazard subcategory. The subcategory is a letter that appears after the hazard category number, A, B, C, D, or etc. So for example, when you have a hazard class, such as skin corrosion, the hazard category could be a number one, and the hazard subcategory could be A. Again, it's important to know that a product subcategory A is more hazardous than the subcategory B. Two hazard classes are assigned a hazard type instead of a hazard category, and they include self-reactive substances or mixtures and organic peroxides. The hazard types is assigned by a letter A, B, C, or D. So for example, a hazard class organic peroxide could be assigned a hazard type A rather than a number. A product hazard type A is more hazardous than a type B. Let's look at an example. This is Tulian. It's a health hazard. And again, if we're looking at the category breakdown, this could seriously damage your eyes. It's defined as a category two, and there's also a subcategory B. Acylene gas is a flammable gas. And again, this is a physical hazard. It's a flammable gas, and it's only assigned a category number one. Pictograms are a great way to identify the hazards of a product, and they include everything from flammable, health hazards, corrosions. What's typical of all, most of these pictures is that they're all in a red diamond shaped box with the exception of biohazards here at the end. The first picture is of a flame. It represents a fire hazard. The description is this product can ignite or catch fire easily. The hazard is fire and explosions and examples include flammable gases, aerosol, liquids or solids. Organic peroxides type B, C, D, E and F would all be covered under this category. The next is the exploding bomb, explosion or reactive hazards. These products can catch fire or explode. And again, this is also a fire and explosion hazard. Examples include self-reactive substances and mixtures that are only type A and B or organic peroxides type A and B. Flame over the circle stands for oxidizing hazards. The description is it can cause or intensify a fire or explosion. The hazard is fire and explosion, and examples include oxidizing gas, liquids, or solids. The next is a gas cylinder. Description is compressed gases, dissolved gases, and refrigerant liquefied gases under pressure. The hazard is explosion and frostbite, and examples include gases under pressure. This includes liquids that are under pressure, such as refrigerant liquids and gases. The next item is corrosion. These products are corrosive, which means they can melt your skin on contact. Hazards include skin corrosion or irritation, eye damage or irritation, or corrosive to metals. And examples include skin corrosion and eye damage. Skull and crossbone. These products are toxic. The hazard is that it's fatal, toxic, or harmful if inhaled, in contact with skin or if swallowed. Examples include acute toxicity oral category 1 or acute toxicity inhalation category 2. The exclamation mark is also used to identify less severe toxic chemicals. These products are less toxic than the skull and crossbone, however, are still important. The hazards include irritation, skin sensitization, damage to organs from one-time exposures, and examples include skin irritation category 2, skin sensitization category 1A, and acute toxicity oral category 4. Health hazards is a new symbol as part of the WIMIS 2015 program. The description includes may cause or suspected of causing serious health effects. Hazards include respiratory sensitization, germ cell mutagens, cancers, reproductive toxicity, asphyxiation hazards, specific target organic toxicity, single or, rep or repeated exposure. And examples include carcinogens category 1 or respiratory toxicity category 2. Biohazard is the only symbol that's not shown with a red diamond, but rather with a black circle. 
This includes bacteria, viruses, fungals, and other toxins. The hazards includes can cause infectious diseases, and examples include biohazardous infectious materials. Physical and health hazards not otherwise classified by the system. So in some cases, you might deal with products that won't have a picture on them. These, this system is designed to capture those unique items. The description includes physical hazards or health hazards not covered in any other hazard class. The hazards include serious injuries or death and can affect the health of a person after acute or repeated exposures. Examples include physical hazards not otherwise classified or health hazards not otherwise classified. And lastly, miscellaneous. The description are various classes of hazards that do not require a pictogram. The hazards include pose a very variety of different hazards and examples include asphyxiation, combustible dusts, or flammable gas. These classes and categories still require the single word hazard statement and other required label elements. Labels. Labels are a great tool to identify hazardous products in the workplace and provide a brief description of all hazards and their precautions. So this is a supplier label based on the WIMIS 2015 system and next to it is a workplace label that you would make on hand. There's a lot of difference and similarities between these two. First off, you have to have the name of the product, a general description, and also referencing the SDS sheet. The supplier label will provide more information than your workplace label. Your supplier label is going to include six elements, including the product identifier, the pictogram, a single word identifying the danger, a hazard statement, the precautionary statement, and the initial supplier identifier. Now your supplier label must also be available in English and in French. Workplace labels are used when a product is transferred from a supplier's container to another container or decanted. The elements include the identity of the product, information for safe handling, and a statement that an SDS is readily available if needed. A workplace label is not required under the following conditions. Number one, when you're decanting and using it immediately, or when used only by the worker who decants it, or used during the shift when it was decanted, or the contents of the container are easily identifiable by the color, coding, or its formula. Safety data sheets SDS. SDSs provide information about the product, the identification of the product, the intended use, hazards, precautions, and emergency responses. Let's look at them a little bit closely. SDSs must be readily available, whether it's hard copy or available on the computer. Now, if SDSs are available on the computer, all workers must be trained on how to access them. SDSs contain 16 elements, including the identification, hazard identification, composition, information on ingredients, first aid measures, firefighting measures, accident release measures, handling and storage, exposure controls, physical and chemical properties, stability and reactive, toxicology information, ecological information, disposable considerations, transport information, regulatory information, and other information. WMS regulations require the employer to update a supplier SDS as soon as possible after significant new data about the product is provided by the supplier or otherwise become available to the employer. Hazard controls. Hazards are best controlled through the hierarchy of control. This includes controlling hazards at the source, where the hazard originates, along the path of the hazard towards other workers, or at the worker itself. Now it's important to know the best way to control the hazards are at the source, and the least effective way is controlling hazards at the workers. Let's look at this a little bit closely. Controlling hazards at the source include eliminating or substituting the hazard for something less toxic. Controlling hazards along the path include enclosures, ventilations, housekeeping, barriers, and signs. So the goal here is to protect other workers from the immediate hazard itself. And lastly, controlling hazards at the workers. This can be using education or personal protective equipment, whether it's our respirators, hard hats, safety boots, or eye protection. In summary, WIMIS is a universal awareness tool designed to inform you of the hazards of products and the best methods to protect yourselves from exposure. Summary. WIMIS is a universal awareness tool designed to inform you of the hazards of a product and the best methods to protect yourselves from exposure. Let's watch a little summary video that discusses all of everything we've just reviewed. Staying safe and healthy at work. It's your most important job. But when it comes to hazardous products, how do you know what's in your workplace? And if you use hazardous products, 
How do you protect yourself and those around you? And what do you do if an accident happens? Well, that's what the WIMIS 2015 program is all about. The Workplace Hazardous Materials Information System. It's there to make sure you get the answers and information you need to stay safe. But remember, these questions are the key. What is the hazard? How do I protect myself? What should I do if there's an accident? And how do I get more information? WIMIS 2015 will provide you with the answers to these questions. The manufacturer, distributor, or supplier of a product is responsible for product labeling and information. And your employer is responsible for educating you on the safe handling of hazardous products you use. So what are WIMIS labels? Each hazardous product must have a label with symbols and hazard statements providing information about the type of hazard associated with the product. There are 10 WIMIS symbols and you need to look for them and recognize the dangers they represent. Exploding bomb for explosive or reactive hazards. Flame for flammable products. Flame over circle for oxidizing products. Gas cylinder for gases under pressure. Corrosion for corrosive hazards to metal, skin and eyes. Skull and crossbones can cause death or toxicity with exposure. Exclamation mark may cause less serious health effects. Health hazard may cause serious health effects such as cancer. Biohazardous infectious materials and toxins that cause disease. Environment may cause damage to the aquatic environment. This is optional in Canada. WIMIS labels must also include warnings and precautions for safe use. Your employer is responsible for making sure WIMIS labels have been applied to all hazardous products in your workplace. But WIMIS also demands that all suppliers and distributors provide a lot more information about their products via Safety Data Sheets, or SDS. These sheets provide all the information you need to know about the product to ensure your safety and what to do in the event of an accident or emergency. These sheets must be readily available on the job site to all workers. Once your employer has made sure both labels and safety data sheets are in place, you must be trained on how the system works, including the safe use and handling of all the hazardous products in your workplace. So, those are the basic facts. But it all comes back to you asking the four questions. What is the hazard? How do I protect myself? What should I do if there is an accident? And how do I get more information? Because the most important thing is you going home safe at the end of each day. Thank you for your time. Now let's review a test. If you have any questions about this or any other training program, please contact a member of the Bellator group.